Tying our shoelaces is one of those lifelong skills that we are proud to master as kids. It turns out that that simple act has a surprisingly deep history. Early humans learned to tie knots before they invented the axe or even the wheel. And about 500 years ago, the Inca are believed to have used knotted ropes as a way of storing huge amounts of information. Today, knots are everywhere you look. In the ribbons around gifts, in the rope netting of children's playgrounds, and all over traditional boats and ships. And they could be in some unexpected places, too, like the ornately carved Celtic braids that decorate old buildings, and the cable ties keeping Mars rovers neat and tidy. And of course, sometimes they are too everywhere, like when you're just trying to get your headphones out of your pocket, darn it! Fortunately, knots are more than just wire-based mortal enemies. By understanding how knots really work, we can use them as a tool to explore some important problems in science today. That's the goal of so-called knot theory, a relatively new branch of mathematics, which, you guessed it, is all about the surprisingly complex study of knots. Now, it's worth mentioning at this point that a mathematician's definition of a knot is probably different from what yours or mine is. Unlike our shoelaces or the rope hitching a boat to the dock, a mathematical knot has no loose ends. The string can have crossings and intertwinings, but there can't be any break. It's one continuous loop. To make a mathematical knot, imagine looping a string around a box and tying a loose half knot across the top. Then, take the two loose ends and fuse them together. Throw the box away, and you are left with a continuous loop of string that is entangled in the middle. Your very own mathematical knot. Of course, you could also save yourself the effort and go out and buy a pretzel. When the two ends are joined, that is another mathematical knot. Both of these are simple examples, but there are lots of ways that knots can get more complicated. Back in 1860, the scientist Lord Kelvin even suggested that the various chemical elements were actually different kinds of tiny knots suspended in the mysterious ether. Like hydrogen would be one kind of tangle, oxygen would be another, and so on. It's a nice idea. But a bad guess. There is no ether, and atoms turned out to be nothing like knotted strings. But Kelvin's imaginative suggestion did kickstart a new kind of thinking about knots, one that was rooted in mathematics rather than aesthetics. Knot theory was born. Compared to some other branches of mathematics, like algebra and geometry, which have been studied for thousands of years, the math of knots is only a couple centuries old. Although things do get pretty complicated, thinking about the shape of knots is actually something you can do without always needing advanced math. Like, you don't have to be great at calculus to get your head around the problem. And lots of breakthroughs in knot theory have come from researchers just thinking about it in their own unique way. More on that in a moment. But first, let's look at how all this knottiness is actually being used. Take biology, for example. Almost every cell in your body contains around two meters of DNA packed into a space less than one hundredth of a millimeter across. All that DNA has to be coiled up in a way that not only fits inside a cell's nucleus, but is also accessible. After all, it provides the instructions for all the other processes in the cell. But just like those headphones in your pocket, long strands of DNA are just dying to get tangled. And the science has shown that the longer the strand, the more likely it is to get twisted up. So biologists are looking to knot theory to see how DNA manages to always stay ordered. The DNA in bacteria is a particularly good target because, just like the mathematical ideal, bacterial DNA is usually arranged in a single continuous loop. DNA's famous twisting double helix structure means that when a bacterium replicates its genetic material during reproduction, it inevitably creates knots that would kill the microbe if left unchecked. But biologists have discovered a special kind of enzyme that finds these tangles, snips open the loop, straightens things out again, and then seals everything up. Knot theory helps biologists understand how long it will take the enzymes to do the job on various kinds of twists. And by making antibiotics that target those knot-busting enzymes, medical researchers are seeking to harness tangles in the fight against infection. Scientists are also developing new and interesting materials made from knotted nanoparticles. Synthesizing tiny knots is tricky business. But in 2017, chemists created what they call the octafoil knot out of just 192 atoms. They still aren't sure of its properties, but hope it will be useful for creating things like ultralight armor or flexible surgical sutures. But for scientists and engineers to truly harness the power of knots, they need to know more about them. And that 
is where math comes in. The first challenge for mathematicians is to try and figure out how many different types of knots there actually are. One way to classify them is by how many crossings a given knot has. That is, how many times the string passes over or under itself. Some knots look really complicated, but can actually be untangled to look much simpler. The key is to find the minimum number of crossings inherent in a given arrangement. The simplest kind of knot is actually something most of us wouldn't consider a knot at all, just a closed loop with no crossings. Mathematicians call it the trivial knot, or the unknot. You might also know it as a circle. Because of the way a looped string works, there are no knots at all that have only one or two crossings. There is one knot with three crossings called the trefoil knot, and one with four called the figure eight. So far, so simple, but from five crossings upwards, things get more complicated. There are two different knots with five crossings. No matter how much you move them around, it's impossible to turn one five-crossing knot into the other. Similarly, there are three unique knots with six crossings, seven knots with seven seven crossings, and after that, the numbers start getting out of hand. By the time you get up to 10 crossings, there are 165 completely different, unique knots that can't be simplified any further. To try and keep track of them, mathematicians in the late 19th century tried creating tables of the unique, or so-called prime knots. These tables have been an invaluable tool in understanding more complex knots, since some tangles with many crossings can actually be broken down into a collection of more simple knots. Those are called composite knots, and just like large numbers can be broken down into their prime factors, large composite knots can be broken down into their prime knots. Unfortunately, it's not always that straightforward. It can actually be really hard to figure out how many unique knots there are, and if the knot you happen to be thinking about has already been found. The ambiguity is especially troublesome as the knots get more complex. Like in 1974, a mathematician found an error in the knot tables that had been around for nearly a hundred years. Two of the unique knots listed with ten crossings were actually duplicates of one another, and no one had noticed for all that time. I personally don't actually find that that surprising. How do you keep all this in your head? It's such a tricky problem that even computers haven't been able to solve it completely yet. Knot theorists have developed a bunch of other ways to classify knots with algorithms, equations, or geometric descriptions. One way is to flatten out a knot and imagine it as a complicated roadway with overpasses and underpasses. You can then describe the route numerically, writing which underpass matches which overpass. Other more involved techniques relate the numbers of different types of crossings to each other in an equation to find out if the knots are equivalent. And there's even an approach that involves trying to color knots to help group them and tell them apart. All these tools have helped mathematicians over the years, but the problem is, None of them are perfect. If any one of these approaches reveals that your knot is different to others you're comparing it with, then great, you might have found a new knot. But if they say it's equivalent, you can't be 100% sure that that's the case. Sometimes, one mathematical solution can describe several different knots, so that particular method isn't enough to distinguish them. And if that's not complicated enough, you can always add some extra dimensions into the mix. In 4D, so the three dimensions of space plus one dimension of time, instead of knotting loops of 2D string, mathematicians consider hollow knotted spheres. If that hurts your brain a little bit, join the club. This is some seriously mind-bending stuff. Mathematicians study these knotted spheres by considering what they would look like if they sliced through them at various points. A slice through an unknotted sphere would be the trivial knot, a simple loop. But if you slice through a knotted sphere, you could end up with one of the other known prime knots. Figuring out sliceness, that is, whether a given knot can be produced by slicing up a 4D knotted sphere, is another way theorists can try to distinguish between different knots. And that's actually been done with all of the known knots with up to 12 crossings. One particular knot with 11 crossings had evaded sliceness classification for decades until very recently. The problem was finally solved by a grad student in 2020 after just a few days of considering it in her spare time. Four-dimensional knotted spheres are good fun for masochistic mathematicians, but they're also helping physicists in their mission to understand the strange and unpredictable quantum world. Quantum particles don't typically follow the shortest path from A to B. Instead, they can take any number of strange loops and zigzags. So to try and predict the behavior of things on the quantum scale, physicists need to consider all possible routes these particles could take. Not theory and its goal of reducing complex entanglements into simpler, more fundamental 
numerical forms is helping solve that problem. The numerical approaches to classifying knots, while not perfect from a mathematical perspective, are nevertheless helpful for predicting most likely quantum paths. And that information helps physicists not only understand the weird quantum world, but also how to harness it to build things like quantum computers. Once mathematicians have conquered knots in four dimensions, they can add even more to help them picture the strange intersecting dimensions implied by string theory. Knots have been a part of human culture for almost as long as humans have been around, but it's only now that we are realizing their potential to help us make sense of the world. So next time you're trying to tie your shoelaces, try not to get overwhelmed. You've been doing this since you were five. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow, and thank you to our patrons for allowing us to take on weird, difficult, awesome, strange topics like this. If you want to tie the knot with us, you can get started at patreon.com slash scishow.